So the final steps for completing this transfer planner will be just tweaking the formatting and, and just making a few adjustments and bringing in some fixture difficulty rating. Um, so that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with the conditional formatting on the fixtures. So if we move over here, if we just take or just highlight all of these rows here. And if we go back, you'll see that I've added my suggested fixture difficulty rating and this was probably back in sort of game week eight you could I'd probably argue Newcastle could go to very easy now um, but yeah we'll add the conditional formatting so what we need to do we need to stay at home across the ribbon across the top and you just want to go into um, conditional formatting and then the bottom option will be manage rules so conditional format manage rules you're going to click new rule and then you just want to highlight this line here format only cells it contain i opted for specific text in here and put liv that's the three characters that represent liverpool and um you can if, if you're in doubt you can have a look through here and, and work it out for yourself i guess and then what i've done on the format is i've selected a black fill with white text so once i've confirmed that you're be able to then see that any LIV whether it's upper or lower case is now highlighted with a black fill and a white text so the slightly annoying thing is that you now need to go do this for the other 19 teams however it's probably a, a five minute job so you can absolutely format this however you wish um, and I'm just going to skip ahead to that now so I've quickly skipped ahead and applied a custom uh, fixture difficulty racing so I've decided to just go with Liverpool and Man City being the the very hard games Chelsea Arsenal Tottenham United and Chelsea below that um, and then you've got Everton Wolves um, probably Leicester yeah and Leicester there so that's what it'll look like it's starting to take shape now and what you can see is like in, in game week four for instance you would instantly be able to identify that's a really tough game week you've got Arsenal Tottenham, Man City twice and, and Burnley so um, it's good for just those those sort of forward planning transfers where you can say actually I'm going to have a difficult game week maybe four or five weeks ahead I need to start thinking about that so a simple grouping I'm going to apply here so game weeks 1 to 14 are done for me so I'm going to highlight those columns shift alt and the right arrow as you can see I just group that off then so then it gives me a bit more clarity for the, the game week that we're approaching one last thing I want to do here I want to add some icon sets where we've got increase and decreases so highlight the range that you want to add this to so you can see I've done it from P4 down to P31 you go to conditional formatting icon sets and then manage rules um, so we're going to stay here on the top row um, and what we're going to do is change these drop downs to number and we're just going to put 0 0.001 and leave that as 0 so you can now see that adds a bit of colour to it so if I copy that over and we can probably do the same on the price increases So I guess you can really tweak this however you want. You can add more columns. You can you can do whatever you please with this now. Ultimately, the, the, the core basis of the API data that sits behind it should work with no issues whatsoever. If you do notice that maybe perhaps some price changes are not flowing through or the, the net transfers aren't updating, the two-step process you need to do is literally just come into the data tab you can right click and refresh or you can go to design and refresh and you'll notice just down here it was running the query actually it's probably best to just delete that again to show so it's bringing that data in and then what you need to do on the pivot table you can um, go into uh, analyze and go to options and if you click into data you can select refresh data when open in the file but it's very simple if you refresh one pivot table manually 
it will update every other pivot table in the file so if I click to refresh here that would also update the other three um, so yeah if, if you do encounter any issues just make sure you you manually refresh those um, but other than that yeah, you should be good to go so hopefully you found this useful and if you do have any questions or any potential issues just please leave a comment below thank you